Hello again, Higher Algebra students. Back here with Unit 11, Lesson 6, which is graphing 1 over x and then the translations uh, involved with that. So it's really a follow-up of our last lesson, but adding just a little bit more about the translations. And um, just to start here again, just a reminder, what you're going to see with these graphs is as you look at these four graphs, and it's tough to tell maybe that it's four different graphs, but they break up here into four different graphs. And um, the graph that does not belong here is the idea. And as you can see, um, really graphs two, three, and four here um, all have kind of mirroring at the um, almost diagonally mirroring um, graphs, which is typical for the one over x concept uh, versus this graph here, which is is really mirroring or reflecting uh, over a vertical axis um, instead of diagonal. And that is not necessarily typical for the one over X or isn't uh, gonna happen with one over X. And so that would be our graph that does not belong. So just keep that in mind when we're thinking about what these graphs look like, really they should be versions of two, three, and four. All right, so just a quick reminder on the types of asymptotes that we can expect to see here. We're gonna, we're gonna work with horizontal asymptotes. And again, horizontal asymptotes will be at a certain Y. We'll work with vertical asymptotes that will be at a certain X. We won't work with oblique asymptotes in this course, um, but remembering that difference with horizontal and vertical and how to label them as either Y equals or X equals, um, it's easy to get those turned around because we're used to thinking that uh, we're changing the x value here, but it's, it's really about the y value as the constant. Here, the x value is the constant, and so keeping that in mind um, as we move forward. All right, so again, um, this is just, again, a repeat slide from last lesson, but just a reminder here, the written as y equals, written as x equals, the graph should never cross those lines. That's the idea of being an asymptote. And again, we use a dotted line to represent it. That dotted line separates it from the solid line that's the actual graph in that particular problem. Okay, so just here, the idea of identifying the asymptotes. So you can see here on this, um, and it's tough to see the labeling, but uh, this is actually a, a negative four here, and this is a negative two, and a two, and a four over here. Same thing here, negative two, negative four, and a two, and a four. Um, so what we see here is the blue line represents a vertical asymptote. And again, what's constant about that vertical asymptote is that the X is always negative two. Okay, so that's again, vertical asymptote, the X stays constant. And then the horizontal asymptote we see here is right on the axis right there. And that the horizontal asymptote then would be a Y equals zero for the horizontal. All right, so just moving over here, same sort of deal. Um, this says negative five and five, and negative five and five. Um, and what you see here is the vertical asymptote this time is right on the axis. So the vertical asymptote is at an x equals zero. Again, that's because the x is zero for all of the values on this asymptote. Uh, you can see you've got 0, zero 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, 0, 4, 0, 5, and so on. Uh, the horizontal asymptote here would be at y equals negative 1. And again, that is because for all the points on this black dashed line here, the x changes, but the y is always negative 1 for these points. So that would be y equals negative 1 um, for that asymptote. Uh, quickly here on these other two, um, again, this is the number five right here and negative five and five. And so when we look at this for the uh, vertical asymptote, one, two, three, four. So the vertical asymptote, the, the uh, X value, excuse me, is always four. So that would be at X equals four. And the horizontal asymptote, one, two, three, is always at a Y equals three. Um, so again, just always keeping in mind which one's the X, which one's the Y, so that we don't get those backward. Um, here again, we've got, now we're just back one, so that's at X equals negative one, and we're down two, so this would be Y equals negative two for that asymptote there. 
Okay, now transitioning into the translation side of this. So when we look at a graph of the one, y equals 1 over x, so the, the typical graph that we're used to, the parent function here, has its asymptotes again on the axes. So the, the vertical asymptote is at x equals 0. The horizontal asymptote is at y equals 0. Now we're going to look at what happens when we add in this minus 1, and then separately what happens when we add in this plus 2. So the probably the easiest way to think about this is what is our new asymptote? And so for instance here, where does this fraction right here have its problems? And the problem would be when x equals 1, because now if x equals 1, it's 1 minus 1, and so now our denominator would be 0. So what we're seeing here is our new asymptote is really going to be at x equals 1. So what that really means here is, oh, not x equals y, x equals 1. And maybe that's a little too light to see. I'll write it in green here, x equals 1. And there's the asymptote. Okay. And so what we're seeing there is this graph that we drew is moving one unit to the right. So that essentially this green dashed line is now the, the new line that this graph isn't going to hit. And so at this point, what we're thinking is something more like this and like this. Okay. But we also have this plus 2. And what the plus 2 then means is if I put, say, um, uh, let's see, if I put 2 into the equation, for instance, now I've got 1 over 2 minus 1, but then I have this plus 2. So when I put 2 into the equation, which is right now this point right here is where is our x equals 2, um, at that point, we are now moving up two units. Okay, so the adding or subtracting after the 1 over x root or parent, um, that is a vertical translation. So what we have here is that whatever happens in the denominator is horizontal, and whatever happens out here is vertical. And so the plus 2 means we're just adding 2 to the y's. So in the end... What's going to happen here is on our axes, we have, because of the horizontal translation, we're going to have an asymptote at x equals 1. And because of the vertical translation, we're going to have an asymptote at y equals 2. And then our graph from there is going to be the same look but the graph was just from the original moved over one to the right and then up two units. And again, the one to the right is because of this right here. Now when we put one into the equation, uh, we get a one over zero because it's a one minus one then. So that's our new asymptote. And then uh, the plus two is again, just whatever our y value was, we now add two to the y value. So that's going to move it up two. Um, again, because this is just adding to our y at the end. So, again, horizontal translation here, vertical translation after. So when we think about that, going over here, this is a horizontal translation. And again, what's going to make that denominator equal 0? Well, what's going to make x plus 3 equal 0? Okay, that would be an x equals negative 3. So, that means, in this situation that our vertical asymptote has moved three units to the left. X cannot be negative three because then this denominator would be zero. The minus two then is again our vertical translation and that moved us down two units because every Y is going to be down two units. So this is going to be at Y equals negative two. So from there, we have the same look to our graph which is going to be something like this and like this. And again, we could put values into this. For instance, if I put the number uh, negative 2 in for x, so 
what is the y equal at a negative 2 for x? Well, that would be 1 over negative 2 plus 3, and then all of that minus 2. Well, that's 1 over 1 minus 2, or 1 minus 2. So that's negative 1. So at negative 2, the uh, y value would be negative 1. And we could do the same thing if I put in negative 4. What, what is the y value at negative 4? Well, that would be 1 over negative 4 plus 3, and then all of that minus 2. So that's 1 over negative 1 minus 2, or negative 1 minus 2, which is negative 3. So at negative 4, the y value is negative 3. And again, then I could put in a negative 1 or a negative 2 and a half, or I could put in a negative 3. 5 or a negative 3 and a half and just build my points from there. Again, as you're going out horizontally, you can move out one whole unit. As you're moving closer to the asymptote, you probably are moving only over like a half unit because I, again, can't go from negative 2 here to a negative 3 right here to right here because the negative 3 is the asymptote. So this would be at negative 2.5 and then I'd figure out the y value for that. So, Again, horizontal and vertical uh, translations there. Now our last one. This one's a little different here. You can see we didn't do any adding or subtracting in the denominator, so there's no horizontal trans translation. We didn't do adding or subtracting after the fraction, so there's no vertical translation. We do have this negative, though. And if you think about what that negative does, so for instance, what used to be just 1 over 1, is now negative 1 over 1. So when x equals 1, that means y equals negative 1. Okay, what, what used to be 1 over negative 1 is now a negative 1 over negative 1. Well, a negative negative 1 is a positive 1. So now when x equals negative 1, which it did right here, again, that's just replacing the x up there, then y equals 1. So what happened here is on our graph, this is actually a reflection. And the negative out front, if you recall back from many units ago, the negative out front means that this is actually a vertical reflection. So it, it almost comes across the same way as a horizontal reflection would, but when we do this now, our vertical asymptote is still at x equals zero, our horizontal asymptote is still at y equals zero, but our graph now, instead of being what used to look like this, and like this, now actually looks like this. It's in the bottom right and the top left. And again, that's because of that vertical reflection. Uh, so what was up here went down there, and what was down here went up there. And so we have this vertical reflection, so the graph just is kind of inverted from what we're used to. And again, that's caused by putting that negative up front. The other reflection would have been to actually write this as 1 over negative x. But again, that actually has the same effect. So if x is 1, then when x is 1, our fraction is actually 1 over um, negative 1, so the y value is negative 1, which of course is the same as we had up here. What that is, is it's just a subtle difference that instead of the reflection happening vertically, the reflection there is actually happening horizontally. And so you can't really tell in the picture if it happened vertically or horizontally because it leads to the same result because of the nature of this graph, but Technically, when the negative is out front, this is a vertical reflection. When the negative is under, like this, this would be a horizontal reflection. Now, being able to state that is still important because we want to still know that distinction, especially when we start to bring in the reflection with a translation. Um, but for right now, the picture at least is the same for both. So here's just a couple others um, for us to graph and get the asymptote. Uh, so the x minus 1, again, means that we cannot have an x equal to 1. Because if an x equals 1, then the denominator of that fraction is 0. 
So we have one asymptote at x equals 1. And then again, the second part means that we have a vertical translation up 2. We've added 2 to the y values in the end. So our other asymptote is at y equals 2. So here, x equals 1, y equals 2 would be our asymptotes. And then again, the graph, and we could put x values in here to get this, but the graph would look like this. And the x values that would make sense then would be to put in, the points to put in here would be these points that are kind of right next to it. So for instance, x equals zero would be the, what should be kind of the corner there. Um, you could have an x equals two, which would be kind of the corner on this one. And then again, you could move one to the right and you could move one to the left on the left side. And then again, as you're getting in closer to these asymptotes, that's where you'd maybe say, let's make x equal 1.5, and that would be somewhere in here. Or let's make x equal 0.5, and that would be somewhere in here. So again, same idea where that corner is, the biggest, or the nearest integer on the x-axis away from the asymptote, and then one more away, and then kind of that half point between it. So because the asymptote is at x equals 1, we could put x equals 0.5 and x equals 1.5 in to get the y values to build that graph. Uh, here's another one. Again, what's gonna make the denominator equal zero? So what's gonna make x plus three equal zero? Well, that would be x equals negative three. So we now have our asymptote at x equals negative three. So we put our dashed line there. So x equals negative three would be one of our asymptotes. And then the minus two means we're moving this whole thing down two at the end, so the, the y equals negative two would be our other asymptote. And again, there's no reflection here, so our graph in general is gonna have this look to it. And again, x values to check if the asymptote is at x equals negative three, then it'd be good to check x equals negative four and x equals negative two. Um, which would be kind of the points here and here. Um, and then again, you could go one further away. And so um, from negative four, go over to negative five, from negative two, go over to negative one. And then again, you could check that kind of halfway point into the asymptote, which if the asymptote is x equals negative three, we could do negative three and a half and negative two and a half would be a good value to check. Just to get our three dots again, so make sure that our graph is in the right spot. Uh, one more here is that negative one over x. So when we look at that negative one over x, again, this is a reflection now, um, because if we were to put in, say, one in for x, and then we've got that negative, that means when x was one, y was negative one, and again, when x was negative one, then y was one. So what again happened here is our asymptotes are still gonna be at x equals zero and y equals zero. So that would just be a dashed line here and a dashed line here. Um, but again, instead of our normal graph that would be up here and down here, now we have this reflection. And so the reflection being vertical, again, means that, the, that the, what was in the top right is going down here, what was in the bottom left is going up here. So our new graph would look like this. And if you think about with the asymptote being at x equals zero, that means we could check at negative one and one, we could check at negative two and two. Uh, and again, you could go into those asymptotes and check at like a negative 0.5 and a 0.5. And so those would be kind of the three points again around the bend of these of this picture and so you've got the the closest x value in either direction one further away in either direction and then kind of the halfway point between the asymptote and the closest integer which was the, the kind of in between point of the zero and the ones here so zeros and ones and then in between those would be the point fives and then one final example here. So this one's a little trickier because now we've got the vertical reflection out front. 
We've got the horizontal translation here, and we've got the vertical translation here. So first of all, when we think about what are our asymptotes going to be, well, we can't have the denominator equal 0. So that means x cannot equal 4. So we can put in here our asymptote at x equals 4. Uh, because we know x can't equal 4, because that fraction cannot have a denominator of 0. We also know that this got moved up 1 by this uh, vertical translation. So we have a horizontal asymptote here at a value of y equals 1. So again, what we'd be used to at this point now is this and this for our picture. But we do have to factor in that we had the vertical reflection. So what was in the top right is going to go to the bottom right, and what was in the bottom left is going to go to the top left. So with asymptotes at x equals 4 and y equals 1, our graph is now going to look like this. And again, with an asymptote at x equals 4, good spots to check and figure out what the values would be. What the y values would be is, are at 3 and 5. And again, you could go one more away, so you could go to 2 and 6. And then we go to that halfway point between these two, so you could go to a, a 3.5, or you could go to a 4.5 to kind of get, again, these three dots on here to make sure that our graph is pretty much in the right spot. And we'll leave it at that. And thank you, as always, for listening. And if you have questions, please ask.